Hello and welcome everybody. This video will focus on early game tips for Miasma Chronicles that will help you get into the game and cover the first 5 to 6 hours of playtime until you are close to level 7. I will cover the basics of successful combat, how you can access the locked doors and some general gameplay tips. I will not spoiler any story elements, but there are some minor spoilers for gear, skills and your first companion. I also included a small section how Miasma Chronicles plays in comparison to other turn-based combat games to help you decide if you want to spend your money on this game or not. If you're just interested in the early game guide, then you can of course use the timestamps to skip the first part. Okay, let's kick this off with a brief overview what this game is and how it feels to play. I did play the classic XCOM games back in the day and the new reboot of the series. Wasteland 3 is another game I played, so I will compare Miasma Chronicles mainly to these two games. The devs stated that you can expect 30 to 40 hours of gameplay for a full playthrough. Miasma Chronicles feels like its very own game compared to the big names in this genre. Wasteland 3 or the Divinity Original Sin series can be some pretty overwhelming experience for a casual gamer like me. There are tons of story elements to follow and so many character mechanics that it is easy to get lost. Not exactly your pick up and go game, more like games you really dedicate yourself to and dive into those deep mechanics and enjoy the plethora of questlines. The XCOM series on the other hand is more a combat simulator with an attached base building game where you hop from mission to mission without a classic RPG storyline. For me, Miasma Chronicles falls exactly in between these two takes of the genre and does so quite expertly. You have a semi-open world RPG adventure game. Think more of it like a God of War game from an isometric perspective with turn-based combat. The narrative is very cool with excellent voice acting but more focused and not as overwhelming as in Wasteland 3 or the Divinity Original Sin series. In the first 2-3 to three hours you are learning the basics without being schooled by some boring tutorial. The whole game is very accessible without being shallow. The combat mechanics are really good, exploration is rewarding and you soon learn how powerful stealth in this game is. More on that in the combat section of this video. So if you like a nice post-apocalyptic adventure with some easy to grasp RPG mechanics that do not force you to read three books before creating a character, you will find this to be the perfect game. It is a really enjoyable experience so far without overwhelming me. A perfect mix that runs smooth without any bugs and looks gorgeous. With its stealth mechanics and the whole combat before the combat options, the game offers also its very own take on the genre by adding dynamic and fun systems prior to the regular turn-based combat formula. Let's start with some general tips for your first couple of hours in the game. The game has four difficulty settings. You can change between the first three anytime during your playthrough. Only the hardest setting is not available once you started the game. The tactical settings on the other hand cannot be changed later, so make sure if you really want to go with the more unreliable full tactical setting or not. Take your time to explore every corner of the maps, the first few are not that big, but this changes later. Plastic, the money of this game, can be found everywhere. Consumables are more rare, but can be found occasionally. There are two shops in your starting settlement, both will be unlocked as you progress through the main story. Only spend money on consumables if you are in dire need of them, like medipods that can also revive downed companions in a fight. But don't buy any guns yet. The item I will really buy is the weapon attachment energy gain mod that gives you 5 kW per hit. More on that in the combat section. Another worthy attachment is the Vali damage rounds mod. This adds a flat and reliable 10 damage to your shots. Don't worry about the side quests yet. You will bump into them automatically, but they are mostly of higher level. The game opens up after you complete the data drive retrieval mission. By that time you will find plenty of side quests in your lock that are still slightly above your level. 
You can always change mods and refund skill points. So play around with everything until you find your perfect setup. Don't sit on unspent skill points. Just put them into something else until you have enough to unlock your desired skills. Refunds are free. There is a travel option in the first settlement which is not related to any quests yet. Take it. There are no enemies around but some nice items and a keycard for one of the two storage houses to be found. To open the locked gate in this area, follow the cables on the ground. Your first keycards for locked doors are basically lying around close by. The two keycards in Widow's Mine can be found after the two combat sections. You will come across two doors locked by a keypad with some clues given in text locks close to the locations. For the first one, Take a look at the old keypad installed next to the new. Take a good look at the blinking hashtag symbols in the top row. Maybe you should start counting how often they blink. For the second keypad with the locked up black market dealer, take a look at the outer wall next to the cage. Someone used his gun to mark the wall with a coat. Let's take a look at combat and skills. It all starts very basic, but the rage mechanic is not explained in the game. Basically, you gain rage for every kill and once the bar is filled, you gain a very powerful next attack that is a guaranteed critical hit. If you kill an enemy with this attack, you will gain another action. This always happens if you kill with a critical hit. Movement is king during a fight. Reposition often and lure enemies into crossfire sections where you can attack with multiple characters. Which leads to the next advice. Spread out. Try to avoid placing your team at one spot. Overwatch is the first ability I would unlock for Elvis. This is an extremely powerful skill because it can trigger multiple times as long as you have ammunition. So make sure to equip your assault rifle when you are using it. Unfortunately, Overwatch triggers not when enemies lean out of cover to shoot, only when they move. But a good starter tactic can be to fall back and lure enemies into your Overwatch zone. Dix needs a few more points before he can unlock the ability, so only Elvis has the ability in the early fights. As I said, mobility during a fight is king. Unlock Dix sprint and shoot skill. This ability has only a short cooldown and is very strong in the early game. The next thing you unlock before finding your first companion are the Miasma powers for Elvis, the equivalent for magic in this game. Your blue kilowatt bar is basically your spellcasting resource bar. You will immediately recognize how powerful these skills are. Like your guns, these abilities can later be modified with the red and blue slots you see at the skill icon. Red slots add damage effects but also increase the kilowatt costs. Blue slots can counter these effects by reducing the costs. Your first ability is already very useful to throw enemies into explosive barrels. The second ability is a chain lightning. Not very devastating in the beginning, but add the burn effect to it and it starts to become a really nasty power. Speaking of burn or damage effects you place on enemies, these are added before the enemy can execute any action in the next round. So if you add a burn effect with 30 damage to an attack and just ignore the afflicted target with 30 or less health for the rest of the round, it will die right at the beginning of the enemy's turn. These effects are also very helpful to soften up your first armored thieves with 200 health points. Because the Miasma skills are so strong, I would advise to start building Elvis around those skills. Unlock the additional kilowatt capacity and buy the energy gain mod for his weapon to get back 5 kilowatt with every shot. I personally prefer the Electro Chainer with added burn effect and reduced costs over the other skill. The burn effect adds another 90 damage over time and there are no fire resistant enemies in the early game. But just test it all out. As mentioned before, you can change mods, chips and character skills anytime for free. Once you met Jade, the stealthy sniper, you will recognize just how powerful stealth and ambush mechanics in this game really are. 
And once the enemy squads are getting bigger, you also notice how necessary it is to thin out those groups prior to entering combat and how essential it becomes to position your team. Half of your combat is what happens before you are entering the fight. Sneak around with Jade to take out minor enemies with one shot without alerting anyone. Glass bottles to distract enemies are very helpful here to break up enemy teams. Once distracted, a target will not return to its old position but stay in place. I was able to take out the whole second combat group in the Widow's Mine without any enemy action taking place. Jade sneaked around, sniping smaller targets and using her rage state to one-shot enemies with more than 70 health. After I cleared the room, except for the last two foes, the whole team used one concentrated ambush on those to take them out in one push. On the other hand, I messed up a sneak attack overlooking the additional members of a combat squad and suddenly had to deal with a lot more enemies than expected. So take your time with Jade to check the surroundings, kill as many unaware targets as possible, bring your team into a really good position and make the most out of your first ambush. And bring some empty bottles with you, the super weapon of the post-apocalyptic war zones. The game's difficulty is really tuned around those mechanics before you are entering combat and it adds a very dynamic element to the rather static turn-based formula. Another minor thing that is worth mentioning is that your medic pots can be thrown, so you don't have to heal with the character that needs healing, you can use the action of another character and these medipods also revive your downed teammates and these teammates can instantly execute an action. So you can use one action from one character to revive another character and gain two additional actions from this character in the same round. I hope these first impressions and gameplay tips have been helpful and thank you very much for watching the video. More Miasma Chronicles coverage is coming very soon, so stay tuned if you are interested in this game or already playing it. And please feel free to add your own tips for new players in the comment section. This is all for now about Miasma Chronicles, take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.